kronos24.pl Polski portal o zegarkach luksusowych. So we, before we talk about this year's Basel World, please let me ask you about the 2009. It must have been very special year for you and for your brand. How did you manage to do all this with a new factory and a new movement in times of economic crisis? The economic crisis was our friend. I, I nearly regret that it's, uh, it is over now. Because when time is difficult, the strong are becoming stronger. When time is difficult, the people with courage and visions are getting much further than in normal time. So um, the crisis was a very good opportunity, opportunity to hire people, opportunity to buy machines uh, and not wait 18 months till they arrive, but wait only two months or four months. Uh, the crisis was a good opportunity for us also to give new mandates to uh, we could employ a consultant in metallurgy we could give a, a mandate a develop, a development of on materials to the university of lausanne um, it was also a good opportunity for us to uh, invest in events and sponsoring because everybody was giving up so 2009 was a fantastic year and it ended up as being even the second best year of our history and the last quarter was the best quarter ever of 2009 so uh, you can see how good the year 2009 was I hope that we do as well in 2010 than 2009 because 2009 will remain as an excellent uh, great year for Hublot and 2010 has now started fantastically because uh, from the development point of view because we present here in Basel the UNICO. UNICO is our new chronograph movement. The chronograph movement is, a, is the base, you know. How many brands do produce their own chronograph movement? Only eight. So we, we belong to the eight brands that can claim the chronograph movement I make myself. So that's fantastic. Uh, we also present uh, Minute Repeater Tourbillon. The Minute Repeater Tourbillon how many brands are making their own Minute Repeater Tubio? Four. So, uh, we now belong to the very selective club of people, of brands, that can claim Minute Repeater I make in-house, Chronograph I make in-house. So, 2009, 2010 will be in the history probably the most important and the most successful years of Hublot. Okay, you mentioned about Unico, your first in-house movement. What are your expectations about this movement and what are your plans for the future with it? Yeah, the expectations is that uh, the movement uh, uh, will come out from June or September 2010 on and the expectation is also that one day we will produce 100% of our chronographs with the Unico. The Unico is, ba is made, it has been designed, has been conceptually uh, uh, designed to be produced at 20, 30,000 pieces per year. And that is what we want to do with Unico. Unico is our base, and in 2013, latest 2015, 100% of our chronographs will be Unico. Okay, as we are here in Basel, on the Basel World Fair, could you please tell us about a bit about the new watches from Iblo, and yeah. especially the, the ones that you plan to use Unico in? Yeah, the new watch that, that we plan, the Unico, is the Big Bang King Power. Uh, and uh, in the same materials, in, 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 in ceramic and in gold. The price difference between a Unico and a 17750 modified by us will be around 7, maximum 10%. So there's not a big gap between the two. The Unico movement has been designed to fit into the same case as the existing 17750. Uh, cases. We can even propose to consumer who have a big bank 7750 just change movement. So uh, it is an interchangeable uh, uh, concept uh, with the 17750 and uh, beside that we present also a new ladies line called Tutti Frutti with different new stones uh, like hematite, uh, uh, rubies, uh, Sapphire, uh, Savorite, so it's it's a it's a quite important uh, 
collection of many, many uh, different colors for women. Yes, okay. As you are reckoned by many as a true visionary, how do you see a future of watchmaking in, in a nearest future and in a longer distance, in let's say 10, 15 years? I see an enormous growth for watchmaking, uh, for the Swiss watchmaking, especially in the high end. The high end will grow and grow and grow and grow. And the high end is something uh, unbelievable. Um, because the more wealth grows in the world, the more people have, want to have access to watches. And watches is a communicating instrument. It helps to people to communicate who they are. Today, less and less people buy watches, expensive watches, to show what time it is. That is not so relevant anymore. So, as long as we have wealth, as long as the economic uh, perspectives for the future are developing, we are going to follow. So, huge, huge uh, 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 future for watches. High quality Swiss watches. Short term is the same. I mean, the, 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 we can see it now. The, it has started again. And what type of watches will we have? We will have mainly watches, mechanical, which are similar to art, that are made by hand, where you have substance, where you have value. Uh, quartz technology and all this, I believe, is for average or exceptionally in certain diamond watches for women is acceptable. But I see mainly a development in um, uh, handmade, handcrafted, traditional, uh, historical pieces. Okay, next question is about, about the ambassadors. Hublot is well known from a number of people, number of famous persons that are your brand ambassadors like Bode Miller, like Bruno Senna, like Veronica Varakova, Diego Maradona, as well as uh, big brands like Manchester United, like Alinghi and like recently Formula One. Why is it so important to have such ambassadors for a watch brand and what values do they add to Hublot? It is important because these people represent the brand and very often these people are uh, are followed. You know, if you look at uh, newspaper or magazine, you have more and more uh, of these people are being photographed and everybody likes to see which to, uh, what dresses, what car they drive, because they give example, they are, they are motivator for others. So they play uh, quite an important role. Um, we always associate ourselves with ambassadors when we can share with them a charity. Bruno, Bruno Senna is with the Institute of Ayrton Senna. Bode Miller is with his uh, charity. Varekova is with uh, African Wildlife uh, Foundation. So we always, always, always uh, have this double. Uh, we have the ambassador and the charity. And I think this is quite important because luxury we must share also. We must show the example. If luxury cannot give to charity, then who can give? So the, the, this combination uh, with charity is for us very important. Okay, as I presume you are a watch, watch lover yourself, not only a watch business. If you, were asked, if you were asked a question, what are watches for you? What would you say? Uh, what, a watch is a toy. For me, my, my watches are toys. Toys for adults, toys for boys. So uh, I work in a toy factory. <laughs> And I produce toys, I produce emotion, I produce dream. Uh, and that is uh, uh, what the watch is for me. It is a toy, um, but a toy for adult. Okay, and at the end, our traditional final question. Are there any favorite watches of yours that you like to wear daily? I like to wear daily the watches I produce. Because they, are, they come from my vision, they come from my inspiration, they come from my team, they come from my company. And I like to wear what comes from me, what comes from us. Uh, but I also collect Patek Philippe, which I like very much. And, um, uh, but I don't wear them so often. I have them in the safe. They are classic watches from 1926 or 1950. So they are more watches not to wear. They are watches to look at and to enjoy being the owner. But daily wear, I wear always, always, wherever I am, my humans. Okay, thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much.